My name is Mariana. I'm the head of the customer delivery team here at Wazaku, and I'm joined by my colleague, Abby, our sales engineer. Thanks, Abby, and thanks everyone for joining us today. We'll be running for the next 25 to 30 minutes. If you have any questions throughout our time together today, you can pop them in the question box, which you should find somewhere bottom right on your screen, and we will answer those either during our presentation or at the end of it. The purpose of today's webinar is to walk you through the third and last part of our challenge planning, completing a mini series of three webinars on how to plan your challenge. You can find part one and two on our website, and I believe my colleague Rob is just popping a link in the chat so that you can easily access our previous webinars. As per our usual format, we will start by providing a brief introduction to Wazaku and how we help organizations to innovate with an internal and external audience. We will then move into the details of our challenge planning, which as you will see, it's all about how you can build a strong communication plan to communicate your challenges to your audience, which is a very key part to run a successful challenge. And while doing that, my colleague Abby will share some examples of how our customers have successfully run their communications, adding some practical insights to the theory that we will be covering today together. Now, as you know, Wazaku works with organizations to establish processes and ways of working for innovating at scale. Helping our customers to crowdsource in a systematic, repeatable and scalable way ideas, but also suggestions, and problems and more formed solutions from different audiences. Those being within your organization, within your network of stakeholders or to a fully open crowd with our open innovation services. We do that using a methodology called challenge-driven innovation, where innovation moves forward, focusing on specific topics, specific opportunities, specific goals to achieve or problems to solve, which we defined as our challenges. So rather than asking anyone for any ideas, we can focus your organization your attention and your audience attention and effort on what is most strategically important. Inviting your crowd to contribute by sharing ideas and collaborating to move ideas to completion. So we provide a platform to capture, prioritize, evaluate and select ideas, as well as the reporting and metrics tools to allow our clients to have full visibility into the health of their programs. These insights are quite helpful to refine the processes and the ways of working that you're establishing to create value through challenge-driven innovation over time. As I mentioned, in an easy, repeatable and scalable way. So ultimately, we provide our customers with the end-to-end -end capability to crowdsource ideas from anyone, anywhere, anytime in an always evolving environment. Now, before we move on to the topic of today's webinar, I wanted to share with you the definition of challenge-driven innovation. Challenge-driven innovation, it's ultimately a methodology, a set of repeatable activities to crowdsource, evaluate, and implement ideas against, as we said earlier, your organization priorities and main objectives. How does it work? We start from identifying those priorities. We take a project, a program, that being sustainability, new products or services, driving efficiencies or continuous improvement in a specific department or maybe across your entire organization. And from there, we break those down into portable unit of work, into well-defined and framed challenges where crowdsourcing can be leveraged because we're asking for clear and specific questions aligned to our business priorities with clear ownership and accountability, as my colleague Lisa and Andriana have highlighted and described in, in the first two parts of this webinar series. 
Now, this exercise will lead us to a healthy pipeline of challenges against your main programs and projects aligned to your goals and priorities. Once we have defined our challenges, the next step in this methodology, in this process, is to select the channels, so the audiences that can help you solve those challenges. As we mentioned earlier, that might be your internal employees, your suppliers, your startup communities, your global community, our global community of solvers, or, or maybe a mix of those. So you'd be surprised to find out that often ideas will come from someone that sits outside your usual suspects, someone who might be able to look at your challenge with a new set of eyes from a different perspective, enabling you to leverage the diversity within your crowd. Now, we've defined our crowd, the challenge has been planned, we'll be focusing today on the last part of that challenge planning. What will happen next? We launch the challenge on our platform, the ideas or solutions are then evaluated by different subject matter experts, shortlisted and selected before going into your organization for fund development and execution. Why we're so keen on this methodology? Because you do get ideas which are aligned to your business problems, which are relevant to your business, and it's a repeatable and scalable process which you can use in different areas of your organization to scale innovation, enabling different problems and opportunity owners to solve real challenges. That backlog of challenges and opportunities that every organization has somewhere around their business. So moving on to our challenge planning today, after covering the challenge background, and the challenge framing in our previous webinars, we will be covering challenge communications. We'll be focusing on different touch points with your crowd to ensure that once we have defined our question, our success criteria, our challenge goals, governance and process, we also think about how, when and how frequently we're going to communicate with our audience about our challenge, which, as we mentioned earlier, is a very key element to run a successful challenge. We can have the perfect challenge, but if we don't build into it the right communication effort, we might struggle with engagement. We've seen that in the past. And therefore, don't take full advantage of the knowledge and expertise that lays within your crowd. So in the next part of this webinar, we're going to focus on these five areas in your challenge planning process, providing some key considerations. And my colleague, Abby, will share some real life examples on different communication activities, which you can build into your own plan. Now, an easy way to think about your challenge communications, something that I find quite helpful, it's to think about what are the main milestones from a timeline perspective for your challenge and use those to build your communication plan. So we will be looking at teaser comps to build anticipation and curiosity in the time that leads up to your challenge, making your audience aware of what is about to come. We'll be looking at launch comps to broadcast your challenge with passion when launching a new challenge on the platform to calls for everyone's attention. Um, challenge live to keep driving participation through comms while the challenge is live. Often your audience will need to be reminded about what it is that you're asking them to do. And idea selection to keep everyone in the loop when ideas get selected and make them feel like they're part of a process, they, they feel part of it. And the follow up comms to celebrate success and showcase results. Um, one of the main drivers for returning users is the realization that their voice has been heard, ideas are getting implemented and have a true impact on their organization. When it comes to teaser comms, your audience most likely is already busy and already receiving many communications. When they find out about your challenge, it needs to be easy to understand and spark their interest. At this stage, it's important to think about what's the best way to reach your audience. Is that via email, maybe via the company weekly bulletin or company or team meetings led by the management or most likely a mix of those? On which channels you can easily find your audience because you know they're already there 
and they will be easy for you to reach. Who will be responsible for managing the communication at this stage? Maybe can you leverage any of the resources of your communication departments during this stage or any of the following stage in your communication plan? And finally, quite a good one is to strategize on how you will connect with your stakeholders who can help you spread your message. What are those activities, events that are already happening that you can tie into to give more exposure to your challenge? Now, you can get quite creative with your teaser comms. Abby, what, what have you seen working well in this area? Yeah, well, in this area, you're really trying to build excitement, get people looking forward to what's coming up. And it's something that hopefully is going to be a bit of a break from their day. And it's a bit of an interesting thing to watch. So um, Avery Dennison had this video, the Imagine video. Their initial campaign was a sustainability campaign. And one of the things that's important when running your teaser comms is explaining why it's important for an end user to engage in the campaign. So Avery Dennison did this by sitting one of their heads of sustainability in a dump, like a rubbish tip, surrounded by waste, mm -hmm. and explaining that sustainability challenges were key to Avery Dennison in order to reduce the amount of their impact on the environment. So exciting, interesting, unique videos like that that also tie into nice branding like the Imagine program, get people a little bit excited. Alternatively, you could be using the platform. Pending countdown clocks are a good way of um, counting down to when a challenge is upcoming and also giving people information about how they're going to engage and letting people think about their ideas beforehand so they can have already formulated something at the point that the challenge goes live. Uh, one that I've seen less, um, but I think is also a, a very interesting way of doing this, is uh, Mats Lundberg's, um, uh, the head of sustainability from Sandvik, who runs a podcast. So um, short 14 minutes or 30 minute bulletins on what's upcoming and what they can get engaged with. So again, just a unique thing that someone can have on in the background while they're listening or doing their day job, getting them excited and building up of what's to come. Thanks, Abby. That's no great. Yeah, I've not seen the podcast very frequently either, but I find it a very, a very interesting one. Now, when it comes to plan your launch comms, um, we must keep in mind um, a few key elements, such as how will your audience access the platform? How are we going to make the challenge available to our crowd? What platform functionality can we leverage? to reach our audience as broadly as we can? Is our workforce desk-based or maybe they're on the field? Could we leverage the use of the mobile app or what platform integrations we could use to reach our audience? So those are all key considerations to make at this stage. As for the teaser comms, it's important to think about who is going to take ownership of the communication at this stage and what sort of activities and events we can either tap into or design to incentivize participation. Abby, we have a good few examples in, in these areas from our customer. What has really grabbed your attention over the years? Yeah, I think what you need to be really thinking about with launch communications is how do I make it really seamless for my users to access the platform? How do I remove any technical barrier for entry and make sure that they're able to easily come to the system and utilize it? And so uh, one way that you can do that is through embedding it in Microsoft Teams. If you're a Teams organization like ours, you're probably all of your users are in there every day sending messages to each other and are very adept at its functionality. As you can see in the top left-hand corner, the Wazoku platform just seamlessly embeds into Teams, making it really easy for people to add their ideas from there. Um, we here at Wazoku, we run our annual awards on um, the Wazoku platform with our employee awards, and we just pin those challenges to the general channel, allowing everyone to easily access and add their nominations, which led to us having a significant uptick actually this year. We also see people run launch webinars, so a launch webinar like a teaser is also explaining some excitement, why it's important, why the campaign is coming, but it also touches on how to use, how to access, making sure people are easily able to access it through the webinar. So we saw a silicon company, Elkham, they ran a series of five webinars to different areas of the business. So people always had a time that they could access and people would get um, enrolled onto the system at that time. 
Um, a quirkier one was with Southeast Water, who, um, as it was the time pre-COVID in their head office, they um, got people to access a genius bar. So uh, in a similar way to the way Apple works, they had genius bars set up around head office where they had um, exciting balloons with campaign branding on and merchandise such as cupcakes. Um, but they would also get people up and running and they would add, add their first ideas and it was adding a little bit of excitement whilst also getting people into the platform. Um, like you were saying, other people do road shows. So when SNC Lavlin launched, they had a road show around the country, which tied into existing events that were being run by the company. So they would show up, they would have a little stand and they would explain the benefits of the platform and get people logged on there. And then two that, sorry, I'm to interrupt. Uh, well, I just wanted to say that I've seen that uh, before COVID and, and after mm -hmm. COVID, of course, done in, in a different way, but road shows and participation in, in different events, um, I've always been quite successful when it comes to define your launch communications. Absolutely. Like you can reach the people where they are. You can help them with any issues that they're having. You get them online. They're able to um, buy into what you're doing, take merchandise home. It, 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 I think the in-person. excited. Yeah, it definitely has an impact. Um, alongside the exciting stuff, there are a couple of other things you could be doing. If you're launching a challenge, don't launch it empty. No one wants to be the first person to add an idea. Get some of your friends or colleagues around you to add the first five to 10 ideas to it. Start collaborating on them as well to set the tone as to what you're expecting in your challenge. Even if you've been running programs for five to 10 years, no one still wants to be the first on a new challenge. And also prodding line managers to just bring it up in stand-ups. I'm sure they're having stand-up meetings with people who, who they work with or they're having one-to-ones or they're having um, weekly training sessions, bringing up the platform in those and getting line managers to uh, get involved in um, can help to overcome some barriers that you have with those people as well, feeling like they're also part of the program. Thanks, Abby. No problem. Now, our challenge is live. Let's say that, for example, we did a big bang online event to promote its launch, as we just said. Our job is not done. Actually, we're not even halfway through it. So it's of strategic importance thinking about different ways of maintaining that momentum, that momentum that you've generated with your teaser and launch comms. It's quite common and quite natural to see a peak in engagement when the challenge is launched and then to see that engagement decrease over time. So at this stage, what we want to think about is what comms will generate new spikes of engagement and will help us drive participation. One suggestion here is to use a data-driven approach to understand what works best and over time, you'll be able to tweak your communication plan based on how your audience responds to different types of communications. Abby, personally, I've noticed that giving a lot of guidance and top tips for idea creators or creating a sense of urgency in your communication, for example, giving people a, a deadline helps keep your audience on track and increase adoption. What other examples have you seen in this area? I'm also uh, prone to a fake deadline. Um, <laughs> like, like Mariana says, um, you will get a spike of engagement towards the end of your challenge. Um, I have in the past um, stated that a challenge is going to end two weeks before it is to try and um, duplicate that spike. And also some of your comms after that fake deadline can be around, oh, you've still got a chance. Did you miss it before? Come in now, um, trying to build anticipation again. Mm -hmm. Branded homepages that look great, like the one on the left, which is Worcester County Council's win platform. They make it exciting when people are in the tool and they've also got program moderators, um, cartoonized people poking to people to do different things within the platform, walking through how to engage and key things that they could be doing. Another thing that you can be doing is in the top right hand corner with John Lewis, who update their weekly digest. The weekly digest is an email that goes out from the platform with a summary roundup of everything that's happened that week. Um, you can be utilizing some customized uh, the configurable top of that to give people updates as to what's coming next week or what's happened last week or just making it feel less like an automated email and something that people can engage with weekly. 
Um, we also uh, see a lot of people sharing, sharing content to groups from the platform, sharing to um, people in your network. Um, your strongest advocates are often around you. So um, getting your team to post and share things to their network. Also, um, again, less along the lines of technology, but it's good to get senior leaders in the platform. People people don't usually have access to, people who are not usually interacting with everyday staff, um, responding to people's ideas, commenting on their ideas, at tagging other people, um, giving them access to people who they can't usually have. If things aren't ticking up in the way that you would expect, we have a little acronym called ACC, A-C-C. So what you should be thinking about is access content comms. First, if I'm not getting engagement, can people access the site? Are people able to log in? Do we have an easy login route? Do they have the URL? Then content, are the challenges that I'm running clear? Are they understandable? Are they resonating with the crowd? Have we thought about what's in it for the idea creator as well as what's in it for the problem owner? And then finally, communications. Have I communicated things out enough? Have I made exciting enough comms? And have I reached the audience that I was expecting to with my comms? That's great, Abby. Thank you. No problem, Mariana. You'll be called up again very soon. <laughs> so um, now when we get to idea selection, the purpose of our communication plan around idea selection is to sustain engagement and achieve a higher rate for returning users by celebrating success, by giving visibilities to successful ideas and their idea creators. So when thinking about these comms, we need to think about how can we keep our audience in the loop? How can we make sure that they have visibility over the output of our challenges and therefore the effort that they've put into it? As I said at the beginning, one of the main drivers for returning users is the realization that their ideas are taken forward and have a true impact on their organization. So organizing live pitch events in front of the management, those being online or offline, and celebrate successful ideas inside and outside the platform are all good practices for your communication plan. Abby, it's your turn again. <laughs> what else can you share with us here? Yeah, I think this one has to tie into your reward and recognition plan, like you were saying, Mariana. If you're going to drive long term engagement, you need to be um, recognizing the users who've been participating by putting banners on the homepage, um, recognizing them in communications, sharing back ideas that have been implemented quickly to the crowd. It's all kind of the obvious stuff, really. If someone's got an idea implemented, tell the crowd what a great job that was. It's also easier to convince new challenge owners to run a challenge if they've seen success from previous challenges. So really shout from the top of your lungs about the, about the implemented ideas that you get out of everything and also clearly sh sharing back the benefits. One of the other things that we find in the, in the platform is it can be nice to have an area where you keep those best practices and share those innovations more widely across your organization. Sometimes people are doing really great things in pockets or silos, implementing great ideas, implementing new ways of working, and then those just aren't getting shared to be used in other departments. And so the platform's a great way of uh, having a centralized place for those exciting innovations to be shared, um, to be more widely used across your network. Thanks again. And finally, communication follow-up. So your communication should be a continuous effort in keeping your audience updated on the output of your challenges, as well as your next initiatives and what is coming next. Often a strong pipeline of challenges is a great driver for users to return to the platform. Also, I believe that your challenge communication follow-up should feed into a wider communication plan around the platform and your idea management scheme as a whole, ensuring you're reinforcing your message around the purpose of your initiatives and the vision for your idea management scheme. Uh, so it, it's important to think about the challenges that you're running, but also how those fit into a wider communication initiative to make sure that you are using the, light, the, the right language and bringing everyone on board in your long-term plan of innovation. Abby, what can you tell us about follow-up comms examples? 
Mm -hmm. So follow up comms is about rounding this off, really, um, but still educating your audience in what's been happening. So that video there on share, enable, stimulate, solve was um, by an organization called ESB um, telling people what's happened after the fact. One of the things that we hear about innovation teams is that they're, it's hard to know what's happening. There's a, there's a lack of transparency. People don't really know what they're working on. And the follow up comms is a great way of alleviating that problem by being fully transparent of what's been implemented and what's been what hasn't been. The existing project tracker is also something that we see on quite a lot of platforms where people are highlighting what innovations are in the works and what's coming up next. The nice thing about making it transparent is you're also enabling the collaboration of the wider organization in the ideas that you're implementing. So you're not just taking them internally into the innovation team and then working in isolation. You're really bringing it into the organization as a whole, asking for their feedback and also showcasing the work that you're doing and the benefit of you doing it. Thanks, Abby. No problem, Mariana. Now, we have, oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to share a few key, key takeaways before we open up the floor for questions. Um, I wanted to leave you with a highlight for each of the areas that we've been through today. So the first one is get your crowd excited. They should be knowing that a challenge is coming before the go live date. They should have the time to think about it and maybe discuss it with a few colleagues, but really giving them the headspace that leads to the challenge so that, that when the challenge comes, they're ready to eat the ground. The second one is broadcast your challenge with passion. You need to be loud. <laughs> you need to be louder than the tons of communications that everyone, every employees or every stakeholders receives on a daily basis. The third one is to use a trial and error approach to see what works, what generate spikes of engagement and build those activities in your future comms plan. The next one is celebrate success, which is a very effective way, as Abby mentioned, to recognize your audience and to generate some real excitement about your challenges. And the last one is to think about how you can leverage the output of your challenges to elevate your wider program and showcase to the business and to your stakeholders the value that you're generating. So I wanted to leave you with this slide. And I believe, Abby, before I interrupted you, you were saying that there were a few questions. I was saying there was one question. One question. <laughs> yeah. To say that direct messaging engages our Twitter followers, can generate important ideas and bring them into the conversation. Can you help? So I guess potentially, Mariana, reaching out onto Twitter to um, generate those ideas and then bringing them into a co-creation community, thinking external. We didn't really touch on external comms here. Is there any anything else that you would be doing externally if you were driving challenges in that way? No, we haven't. We haven't uh, touched external comms. What, what, what are you thinking here? Are you thinking engaging external resources to reach an internal audience? Yeah, I'm thinking about um, tying in social media in general mm -hmm. into your communications plan. When we're broadcasting out the incentive challenges, we broadcast them on, on LinkedIn and into people's social media networks in general. I think that if you're running co-creation communities, it's natural to be right reaching out with your challenges on things like Twitter and then um, bringing those ideas into a co-creation platform in, in order to be evaluated, prioritized and built out and in the end implemented. Yeah, I also think that uh, when you're planning your communication, it's important uh, to think about what channels are available to you. And if as an organization you're used to use LinkedIn and, and Twitter and maybe Instagram, then those should definitely be part of your communication plan because you're the best person to know your audience and you know where they are and where you can find them. So definitely bring those resources in if you know that will help you. Uh, drive engagement and uh, reach the right audience at the right time. Yeah, I think there's something in that, Mary, it is identifying the channels that work for the audience that you're trying to, to reach. Yeah. Because the key in this really is going to where the crowd is. If the crowd's on Microsoft Teams, go to Microsoft Teams. If the crowd check their emails every day, which one of our organizations told us they didn't, and then found out that 70% of their emails were read, and so they definitely still were, <laughs> sent more emails. Or alternatively, if you're focusing external and your crowd is on Twitter, 
broadcast further out to Twitter and um, bring people to co-creation communities that way. Yeah. And I think we're right on time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you everyone for your attentions today. Um, and I'm sure we'll meet you all very soon. Thanks guys. Bye. Thank you.